Well, welcome back. It's been a while. In fact, I think it's been three weeks. This is the longest I've ever gone without doing a video. Um, so I apologize for that, um, for those of you regular watchers. But otherwise, um, I will still put them in order and go from where I left off. And then I'll try to make them up as much as I can within the next few weeks. That's the goal, at least. Um, but I left off with Holy Saturday, so today is... Easter Sunday. Um, Easter Sunday was, of course, busy. Never it actually was um, Easter Sunday because that was on April 17th. But we're still in the season of Easter, so we'll just continue where we left off and act as if we're going from that time. So uh, it is Sunday, April 17th, Easter Sunday, uh, the resurrection of our Lord and the, uh, the, the end of the holiest time of the year, but then also the beginning of why Christ came um, to save us with the Easter season, which we are still in. Um, so we are going to go into the gospel from Easter Sunday, uh, which is from John chapter 20, verses 1 through 9. Let's begin in the name of the Father, Son, and Spirit. Amen. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning, while it was still dark, and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, They have taken the Lord from the tomb, and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloth there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloth there, and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial clo cloth, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed, for they did not yet understand the scripture, that he had to rise from the dead. So we have the empty tomb. Um, Easter Sunday, whenever Jesus is risen, but nobody knows it yet, right? So where's Jesus? Like we wonder, like where's Jesus at? Um, and so we, but we see that you know, of course, John, his beloved, uh, is with Peter. After Mary Magdalene found Jesus first, because Mary Magdalene is also an apostle, just not one of the twelve. Um, she's a a woman, but very important woman in in Scripture and in the faith and in the history of the church. Um, but we have, you know, Peter, the church's first pope. And then we have John, the one who took care of Jesus' mother, Mary, uh, the only one who didn't die a martyr's death. Um, John is the only one that died of natural causes, so he could take care of the mother of Jesus. So I find it interesting that these are the two that have reached the tomb first. Um, but there is a uh, significance behind this whole, behind these burial cloths, you know, with and the napkin uh, here within within the tomb, uh, and it has to deal with uh, tradition during that time period. So let me read. Um, you know, so we have these burial cloths, um, and it says, in order to understand the significance of the folded napkin, uh, you have to understand a little bit about Hebrew tradition of that day, uh, where the folded napkin had to do with the the master and the servant, in which every Jewish boy knew this tradition. Because there was something in here that made John and Peter believe right away without physically seeing Jesus yet. Um, that'll come later. Uh, but uh, when the servant set the dinner table for the master, he made sure that it was exactly the way the master wanted it. And then the table was, uh, the table was finished perfectly. And then the servant would wait just out of sight until the master had finished eating. And then the servant would not dare touch that table um, until the master was finished. So, uh, if the master was done eating, he would rise up from the, from the table, wipe off his fingers, his beard, his mouth, all this other stuff, um, and he'd wad it up and toss it on the table, um, thus indic indicating that it's time to clear the table, so meaning he is finished. Um, that's what the wadded napkin meant, I am done. But, in this case, in Scripture, Jesus folds the napkin, and he keeps it in the tomb in a very nice place, indicating, just like 
the, from the meal with the master and the servant that he's not done. Um, you know, telling the servant not to dare touch the tail because the servant knew that the boiled napkin meant that he's not finished yet and that I'm coming back. So that too is what is taking place during this encounter in the after the resurrection, but there's an empty tomb. Jesus is telling him through nonverbal language and telling Peter and John and Mary that I'm coming back, which is pretty phenomenal, especially within the context of these details and how important these details are. Um, that is not to be ignored. So we know that Christ is coming. So even though we think it's finished because Jesus is dead, he's still not done. You know, they thought that Jesus was done with what he did on the cross, but he's still he's still at work, and he still he is still at work today. So we can use that as a lesson of, of motivation for us and for others whenever we judge other people and their achievements or what they're doing with their lives and everything else, because their the stillness doesn't mean that progress isn't being made. You know, so just whenever we think someone or something is finished and that the mission is completed, there's always more to be done and more to be revealed because we're still blessed to have life on this earth. So we ourselves must have patience. We must have the trust and the perseverance to keep going, not only within ourselves, but with others as well. So that's what we need to find the hope in day in, day out, to encourage everybody to keep striving for holiness and virtue, because that's why Christ died and rise, rose from the dead from, for us. So, with all that being said, it was great to quote-unquote see you again. Have a great day. God bless. Keep it real. Father, Son, and Spirit.